Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 3, Episode 1. This does not have the same caliber, caliber of artist that we had in Season 2, but let's move ahead and see what happens. Now, I watched Episode 1, and this was my reaction, so we are definitely in for a bumpy ride. This season of, of Season 3, Episode 1, we do not have the same caliber of painters that we did in Season 2, which I already recapped, and you can see that on my YouTube channel. So, I'm going to be a little bit snarky, and there also will be spoilers. So if you don't want to know who wins in the competition and who gets advanced, then don't watch. And you can watch the complete videos of the program either on Prime Video or you have to go to YouTube and kind of search for them there. They're never in sequence. Let's get started. All right, for this episode, the first celebrity model that we have is Stanley Tucci. He is known for a variety of movies and well known in the United States. Here he is in the setting. They put a dark setting behind him. He takes off his glasses for the actual sitting. He's also known for, um, he's almost iconic in a way. I mean, he's been around for a really, really long time. I think he's best known now for a cooking show that he does on PBS. So it's, I will also say from experience that painting a man who is bald can be tricky. So now let's take a look at the reveal. This is after four hours, three artists turn their easels around and Stanley Tucci gets to see them for the first time. Now he gets to pick one of these paintings to go home with him and let's see which one that is. That has nothing to do with the actual judging. But look at his reaction when they turn the, the easels around. Can you believe that? Now, I'm exaggerating a little bit to be snarky because he was absolutely lovely and gracious. But I'm telling you, when you look at the three paintings that he has to choose from, my reaction would be to cover my eyes and try to recoup and say, how am I going to say something positive and good about this? So, let's look at painting number one. It's a beautiful painting. But does it look like Stanley Tucci at all? I would say they're bald men, and that's about it. So this, <laughs> and maybe I need to redefine that portrait just means a picture of somebody, but I don't think so. I think you have to have some semblance of recognition, and it's not happening in this painting, although it's a good painting. Here's painting number two. This is a watercolor, and you know that I am just always rooting for watercolorists. She's very young. And you know, from my point of view, it doesn't look like Stanley Tucci. Certain features do, but it doesn't pull together, and she has not used enough color. She's still using watercolor in an incredibly tentative way. A sensitive way, but a tentative way. Now let's look at the third one. And remember, Stanley is going to pick one of these to go home with him. So think for yourself which one you think he's going to pick. All right, this is number three. And this one... See, this happens to me when I don't, when I can't think of something really positive to say, I get mute. So I do think it's a good painting. And I do think that it's important that not only does it look like the person at least a little bit, but it holds up as a painting on anybody's wall. So it is a good painting. But the distortion of his features and the proportions are wrong. And I, I just have a struggle to let that go. So Stanley took some time, looked at, carefully looked at all three of the paintings, and let's take a look at the one that he picks. And I was surprised at the one he picked. All right, here's the one he picked. And he picked it because he said it was very painterly, and it is. If you look really close up, it has a lot of interesting shapes and work done on the facial folds. And I, I love all the different grays. So I think there's a lot of good stuff happening here. I just don't think it looks like him at all. You know, why, why uh, it looks like somebody, but not Stanley Tucci. All right, next up is Freddie Highmore. He's an actor. Um, I forget what, he was no what he's known for. Game of Thrones, for one thing, which I've never seen. I'm probably the only person on the planet who hasn't seen it. But there he is. And he is certainly a likable young man. And they put him in a setting with some sort of graphics behind him and then white around him. 
usually the artists don't incorporate the background, and yet the judges try to make the background somehow inform you a little bit about the sitter. I don't know the sitter well enough to know what information we're gathering from their choices of setting. And now we're going to the place where they turn the easels around, which is the most exciting part. They've been working for four hours. Three artists have four hours to work on painting, and then they reveal them, and the sitter or the model gets to pick one to go home. This one is so flat and amateurish to me that I don't even know what to do about it. We don't have any underlying facial structure. It doesn't look like him. I don't even think it's a very good painting. Now, I have painted many, many, many bad portraits. <laughs> Miles of them. So I know what a struggle it is, but I just don't understand signing up for the program when you, when you just don't even have the rudimentary skills to be able to complete the uh, assignment. This was the second one. This is certainly more painterly, and I think that, um, uh, you know, I at least get a feeling that it's not completely flat. There are some shapes that show some roundness, I like lost and found edges, of course. I think this this artist did a good job with the coloring of using oranges against blues. So using complementary colors is always going to, if, if you do it cleanly and, and thoughtfully, can really enhance an overall painting. And I think she did that quite well. Does it look like him? That's the sticking point on this one. Again, I don't think it has a resemblance to him at all. And I'm starting to think that that's not a factor this season. This is the third one. This was done, I think, with a pastel. Um, I think it has a little bit more of a resemblance to him. I don't really love the... Uh, how? What can I say? Um, something about it is cold. Just not my choice of coloring, perhaps and a little bit too smooth overall. Maybe that's also because he's he's young. You know, when you get a young face, you're not gonna get many uh, places that go in and out. You end up with smoother skin. Look at, look at a baby sometimes, smooth. Anyway, this is the one that he chose, and this is the one that will go home with him. And I think it's a nice painting. It's certainly a pleasing painting, so I say good choice. So now we will go on to model number three and see what happens here? And this person also had what I considered a funny reaction, at least to me. Maybe I'm reading into it, but I thought it was funny. So Indira Varma is the next one, and she is an actress. And she, let, let's look at what she, she looks like in the setting. So they placed her, I really love that red behind her, and she's dressed in black. I think that was, uh, sure lets you be able to see her features quite well. So I thought, um, of all the models, this one might be, for me, the easiest one to accomplish. So she's in the setting, and now they're getting ready, four hours later, they're getting ready to show the reveal. They turn the easels around, and, <laughs> and her reaction was so dramatic. And I know she's an actress, so she could have, she could have faked it or something, but this is her reaction. Look at that reaction. There were several other facial reactions she made, and I thought, I'm feeling her pain. Her pain is she is now in a position where she has to say something good about these paintings, and that is going to be a struggle. So let's look at what she does. This is the first one. This is so all over the place. Oh my gosh. I always say I like things to be anchored in to some degree, there, if you squint your eyes, you can't. It is almost impossible to find any defining shapes or forms. It's just a scattered thing, as if you were looking at it through um, a, a kaleidoscope. I appreciate the color, and I appreciate the uh, the brave use of color, but it's not strategic, and so I just don't think it it works very well at all. This is the one that she picked, the one on the far right. I couldn't get a better picture of it from from a screenshot. I think it's the one that looks the most like her. I, I you know, we at least we have a resemblance. Yes, this one, we have a resemblance. So let's go with that. And this one 
inexplicable to me. It looks a little bit like a hologram or some sort of, um, you know, makes you think about Chuck Close maybe a little bit, but also makes you appreciate Chuck Close because of what a good colorist he is. And this is, this is almost, you know what? I almost thought like, okay, did AI enter the building? What, what and why? What and why? But we talked before, the judge is always looking for something different. And this is certainly different. So, which one do you think Indira is going to choose? Well, it's really not much of a surprise which one she picks because it is the one that mostly that most resembles her. And living with the one with all those little squares would have just put my nerves on edge. So she's picking the one on the far right. So that will go home with her. All right, so that takes care of all the, um, the four hours are up. The models have picked their choices to go home with them, and now it's time for the judges to judge. Now the judges are going to pick three paintings that are going to be in the semifinals of this episode. And then from the semifinals, they will pick one person to go on to the, the official semifinals, the bigger semifinals. Anyway, so they picked this one of Stanley Tucci, and this is the one that he chose to take home. They spend quite a bit of time talking about it and looking closely at his use of paint because he's using a lot of sort of neutral colors that bend toward warm and cool. I mean, I do think he did a good job of balancing warm and cool here. But again, my, my, my pet peeve is it doesn't look anything like him at all. I, I just want it to look a little bit like the subject. Uh, this is the other one they chose. And I think I can't even remember the reasons why. I watched it at first and started to make the video without listening to the judges because I wanted to make up my own mind. And I just can't recall why they chose this one. I, I do seem to remember them saying it was a very good piece of painting, which it is. But does it look like Stanley Tucci or the setting he was in? No. Is it a good painting? Yes. So onward it goes. So those are two of the semifinalists for this particular episode. And the third semifinalist is the one that looks, oh, I thought it was a different one. Okay, it's this one. This, this perplexes me. This perplexes me because it, it's almost ghostly. It's almost not there. It, it, here's the point. It looks like an underpainting. It would be what I would do if it was my first pass at doing a painting and then I'll come back a second time and a third time. It's just so incomplete that there's not enough information to go on. But they chose this one. So now let's look at the two. What In order to enter the competition, you have to submit digitally a self-portrait of yourself. So here's a self-portrait on the right of the artist that did the painting of Freddy. And they're showing these now, which is nice. They didn't used to show this, so you didn't have a good reference. But there's the artist self-portrait next to the piece that she did today. Now let's look at another one. This is the artist next to the self-portrait that he did today. Now remember with the self-portrait, they have all the time in the world. So who knows? Sometimes when they're interviewed, they'll say, you know, they spent months on something. And, you know, if you could spend months on a painting, then four hours is not an adequate amount of time for you to get the job done. You could give me two weeks or a month to work on a painting and, and, and I would be lost. I don't know what to do with that amount of time. Uh, and here's the, the last one, which shows you the self-portrait and the painting that he did of Stanley Tucci. All I can say about all three of these artists, as well as pretty much every artist in this episode, is it was very underwhelming, especially compared to season two, which we just recapped, where oh, there were so many great painters. So let's see, the, who is the winner? The winner is... Dun, 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 dun. Now remember, this winner is going on to the semifinals. Only one person from this episode goes to the semifinals, and the winner is this one. I don't think she has a chance of winning because uh, surely there are going to be better painters coming along. But I could be wrong. You know, the judges, I think sometimes the judges want, want something controversial, and this will certainly create conversation. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color, and let's continue on the journey of season three. 
Portrait Artist of the Year. <laughs> but like I said, so far, it's a bumpy ride. Oh, and um, please join my YouTube channel. All right, see you next time. Bye-bye.